I'm not going very fast, but I've got a grit on my face. I want to talk about three-row mid-size SUVs. Here in North America, these vehicles have completely replaced the minivan for modern families. And with reason. The SUV has a higher ride height, a towing capacity, all-wheel drive, but also offers just as much space as a minivan. And now, pretty much every car maker sells one of these things. You got the Honda Pilot, the Toyota Highlander, the Nissan Pathfinder, and the Volkswagen Atlas. That's just some of many. There's a three-row SUV pretty much in every showroom these days. And Dodge, among others, also offers one. It's called the Durango. You've seen these things already. They've been on the road for quite a while. And to be honest, the Durango is starting to be a bit old. However, Stellantis, which used to be FCA, now, if you still don't know what Stellantis is, I encourage you to Google it, has just applied a facelift for 2021. The Durango has a new front end, it has new wheels, new option packages, new colors, and an entirely updated interior with a more modern infotainment system. It has, therefore, everything it takes to take on its competition. At this point, you're probably wondering, why would I get a Durango when there are more modern offerings on the market? Well, it doesn't end there, because contrary to the competition which offers either V6 engines or turbocharged four cylinders, a Durango can be had with a V8 engine. Actually, it can be had with three flavors of V8 engine. At the top of the lineup, you've got the Hellcat with 710 horsepower. Then there's the 392, which is a 6.4 liter Hemi V8, good for 475 horsepower. And this one, the RT, a good old 5.7 liter, good for 360 horsepower. Now you may be asking, but why would I need a V8 in a Hellcat? I'm gonna tell you, shut the hell up, because Dodge did it. It is the only mainstream SUV that can be had with eight cylinders. And if you're not happy with this one, there's a second and a third. This is just the most badass SUV you can buy. The most badass SUV you can buy that's not German and super expensive. Now the model you're seeing here is the RT with what Dodge calls the Tow and Go Package. Now it gives you upgraded brakes, Brembo brakes, wider tires, a really gnarly sounding exhaust, and adaptive Bilstein dampers. It's a $5,000 package that I highly recommend you get. And on top of having all these performance enhancing goodies, this big guy will tow up to 7,400 pounds in a world where its entire competition is limited at around 5,000. So the facelift that was applied in 2021 really changed the Durango's interior and it is much better than before. Okay, we're still recognizing kind of like the old stuff, like the air vents and, and stuff like that, but the, the, uh, the overall presentation is much more interesting and so are the materials used. Now the one I'm driving has this weird kind of marble texture on the center console. I'm not sure about that. But what really changes is the infotainment system. This is the new generation of um, FCA or Stellantis's Uconnect um, infotainment system and it's much more precise than it used to be. It responds it responds a lot quicker and I still have what my favorite menu is the performance pages. Now what that does, it gives you a slew of information that allows you to tailor your Durango to your liking and also time yourself. You, you have timers, you have performance gauges that show you a whole bunch of cool data like coolant temperature and oil temperature. You have dyno engine. This is showing you in real time how much power and torque your Durango is producing as you're flooring the throttle. You also have this cool G-Force meter and vehicle dynamics. These actually show you what's going on, where the G-Forces are being transferred in your Durango. So this is quite comical because you can have kids sitting in the back. You can be towing a boat and you can be also observing your G-Forces as you're plowing down a country road. I don't recommend you do that while you're towing, but the fact that it's possible, the fact that Dodge offers you this possibility is absolutely hilarious. Dodge also changed the layout of the gauge cluster. It still has digital half analog. You have a large uh, speedometer right in the middle and two analog gauges on the side. Overall, the presentation is quite good. I mean, I've got nothing negative to say about this dashboard. Not so hard to get in. I mean, I'm sitting behind myself right now. It's, there's plenty of, I have plenty of leg room, good 
headroom as well. I've got my center console right here, which is quite deep. And I have my remote control in my headsets for my entertainment system. I got two screens, one on each seat. And here in the middle, I've got my USB ports, heated seats, HVAC controls, and I have an auxiliary power outlet to plug my PlayStation or whatever else kind of toys my kids will be connecting. HDMI and RCA connections right here on the seat. Look how thick these seats are. They're, they're quite comfortable as well. So I can adjust the backrest, but it doesn't slide forward and back. Now to get towards the third row, flip it first and then you have a red toggle right here. You lift it and it opens up the area to climb in the back. And of course, there's cargo space, which is the reason why people buy these things in the first place. Now, you may assume that because the Durango has been on the market since uh, 2014, relatively unchanged, that it's lagging behind its newer competition in the amount of room the trunk offers. But you'd be wrong, because even if there are new vehicles on the market, things like, for example, the Kia Telluride, a new Ford Explorer, or a Volkswagen Atlas, the Durango is still up there among the most spacious in its class. It's actually the third more spacious in its class, the first being the Atlas, the second being the Telluride. But there's only about 20 liters difference between this Rango and the Kia SUV. Go figure. So what you guys probably want to know is how this thing feels on the road, of course. So come with me. We're going to go for a drive in this F8 green Durango with a Hemi engine. We'll see what's what. Put this thing in track mode. <laughs> Listen to that. All right, so here I am in the Durango RT with the 5.7 liter of Hemi V8. It's not a very powerful Hemi V8. This is the baby engine. It makes a lot of noise, as you can hear, but that's also why it's so charming. Every time I drive modern Dodge vehicles, it's, I'm always impressed by how effective they are at doing what they do. But as the old saying goes, there's no replacement for displacement. And this is so true with this Durango. It won't be necessarily quicker than a Honda Pilot with a V6 engine, but it just has the sweet burble and soundtrack of a V8 engine. You can get bored of that. Now, because this Durango is equipped with adaptive Bilstein dampers, I can really adjust the drive modes to my liking. And this is one of the rare vehicles where when you change the drive modes, you're really sensing differences in the way that it handles. So I'm currently in the default setting um, and the Durango just feels like any big crossover. It kind of, you know, body roll is a bit high. It wallows around and the chassis rigidity in this thing is already showing its age. I mean, it really feels like I'm driving something from another era. Uh, when you hit bumps and cracks and potholes, it wiggles around. It's not the most precise machine. However, when you set it to its most aggressive track mode, it suddenly really firms up. And then you're really noticing that Dodge isn't as stupid as we thought. The Durango in this mode feels very, very sticky on the road. The steering wheel is also a lot firmer and I can actually attack corners with this thing. It's just a big teddy bear. It makes a lot of noise. Not much is actually going on, but the handling is decent. Actually, in this mode with the firmer dampers, it feels like I'm driving a German SUV. And that says a lot from an American car maker that's been building this vehicle for over a decade. Another reason why this feels awkwardly German is because the transmission in this thing is a ZF unit. It's the same ZF 8 HP or 8 speed gearbox that you get in a modern BMW. And it is fantastic because it really adapts. The larger the displacement, the more power a vehicle has with this transmission, it seems to just take it all in. It adapts really well to your liking. If you're just going mid throttle like I'm doing right now, even in track mode, it'll, it'll understand that you're not racing anymore. So the Durango is highly effective, even if it's old and dated. It has a lot of cargo space. It will tow more than 5,000 pounds. And with a V8 engine, it is a, it is a very adorable machine. You can't really go wrong with it in terms of enjoyment. But what you need to know is, first of all, you're gonna pay quite a lot more in gas. I mean, even with the eight-speed transmission, this thing isn't exactly fuel efficient. It's very hard to stay under the 12 liter per 100 kilometer mark. 
Then there's the taxes you could pay because it's a V8 engine. I don't know where you live, but here in the province of Quebec, you are charged extra for owning a larger displacement engine. And finally, there's the price of the Durango, which I don't really understand. The one I'm driving, of course, that has a whole bunch of equipment, is $81,000. $81,000! I mean, that's not very far from like a BMW X3M. Of course, it's not the same vehicle, it's not the same size either, but I mean, it is a Dodge. I understand, yeah, you got V8 power, you got good towing, got a lot of cargo space, but still, it's a lot of money for something built in Detroit.